Hello, my name is Andreas. I live in the city that the first German king considered his capital and I would like to invite you to explore his fascinating life. Since when has Germany existed? Who was its first king? He lived at a time when the late antiquity was still present in people's minds. But the Middle Ages had already begun. Amidst all these changes, something emerged that would later become Germany. It was a time full of exciting individuals and events. If you're interested in getting a glimpse of this first German king, welcome to the Postcards from the Middle Ages. We're talking about Ludwig II, who was born around the year 806. He had a famous grandfather, Charlemagne. Charlemagne had created a huge empire that encompassed all of Central Europe. After the death of Charlemagne's son, Louis the Pious, the Frankish Empire was divided among his sons after numerous wars, skirmishes, and other conflicts. This happened in the Treaty of Verdun. Ludwig II received the East Frankish Kingdom. For those interested in the Treaty of Verdun and its implications up to the present day, I recommend watching a corresponding video on my channel, it is linked in the description box. Let's take a look at his kingdom, it already bears a strong resemblance to present-day Germany, Austria, and part of Switzerland, what we commonly refer to as the German-speaking region. So, this is already one reason to call him the first German king. According to sources, Ludwig was what we would call a weapon enthusiast today. At his time, this was certainly a useful passion. Furthermore, he was regarded as skilled and lenient in his dealings with people. And he was a very pious man. However, this did not prevent him from having territorial ambitions outside his realm even after the Treaty of Verdun. He had military conflicts with the Slavs, from whom he demanded tribute. There were disputes with the Danes. He launched an invasion into West Francia, which ultimately remained unsuccessful. Due to the failed expansion to the West, there were major crises in Ludwig's realm. Even his sons rose up against him. In the end, he prevailed and punished them only mildly. We had heard that he was an affable person. In his later years, he repeatedly tried to obtain the imperial title that his grandfather Charlemagne had held. However, in the Treaty of Verdun, Lothair, the king of Middle Francia, received the imperial title. A significant success for Ludwig was his recognition by the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantium. However, he could not achieve an imperial title for himself through the emperor in Constantinople or the pope in Rome. It would take almost 100 years until Otto the Great before the imperial title could be achieved for the East Frankish Kingdom. Back to Ludwig the German, lack of military successes and missing titles are not everything. Ludwig was a patron of the church and Christian missionary efforts. He founded numerous monasteries, like the one pictured here, the Frommunster in Zurich. He also had a significant influence on local governance and the formation of the German state. He promoted the establishment of cities and advocated for the rights of peasants. Many of his political decisions had a lasting impact. They shaped the subsequent development of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. Even though the term, German, or, Germany, is not a contemporary designation, it can still be said that Ludwig the German was the first king of the realm that would later become the Holy Roman Empire, and, much later, Germany. Did you know about the first German king? If you're interested in similar stories, then subscribe to this channel and check out the related videos in the description box. Service, see you next time.